Radioactive water is still leaking from a reactor at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. A new method to find the locations has failed. Identifying the leaks is a key step towards decommissioning the plant. Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, said workers used an infrared camera to search for leaks in the suppression chamber at the number two reactor. It was hoped the infrared images would reveal the locations from the temperature difference between the water and air. Infrared photos showed the temperature was 38 degrees Celsius in the upper part and about 35 degrees in the lower part. But this was not a large enough temperature gap to identify the leaks. The camera was unable to make a more effective reading. TEPCO says it will devise other ways to find the locations. Japanese leaders have faced more than a year of questions and criticism for how they responded to the accident at Fukushima Daiichi. New revelations about what happened in the hours and days after the March 11, 2011 disaster will likely fan the flames. NHK has learned government officials had data on the spread of radiation from the nuclear plant. And they knew that data, which was gathered by a system known as Speedy, was reliable. And they knew that data, which was gathered by a system known as Speedy, was reliable. But they deliberately withheld it. But they deliberately withheld it to avoid sparking panic even though the media repeatedly asked for the information. NHK obtained a draft report from the Science and Technology Ministry on what happened after the meltdowns at Fukushima Daiichi. The document says on March 15th, four days after the accident, ministry officials used Speedy to identify high levels of radiation in Namie. The town is about 20 kilometers northwest of the plant. The officials reported the findings to the Prime Minister's office that day. They also combined some of the speedy data with other radiation readings and released the information to the media. But there were doubts about the accuracy of the results. The ministry finally decided to divulge the complete speedy data at the end of April, more than a month after the nuclear accident. Officials argued they withheld the full results because the findings were based on predictions and releasing them could have caused panic. After they actually took radiation readings, they found that the levels were high. So officials can't really say Speedy is unreliable and inaccurate. The system is there for the Japanese people to help residents avoid radiation exposure. So the verification is insufficient from the perspective of the Japanese people and residents. I'm surprised the government did not fulfill its obligations. It is very regrettable and frustrating. The head of the government panel investigating the Fukushima accident says if officials had released the speedy data and explained its reliability, people in Nami could have used the information to come up with an evacuation plan. Instead, they stayed in the town and were exposed to radiation for a month. Officials at the utility that runs Japan's damaged nuclear plant have made up a mission that would likely bring them more criticism. They say Tokyo Electric Power Company employees estimated the impact a huge tsunami would have on Fukushima Daiichi back in 2006, five years before the accident. Five years before the accident, if waves exceeded 13 and a half meters, all power would be lost and it would, it would be impossible to inject water into the reactor to keep it cool. The study also said it would cost about $25 million to implement measures to prevent such an occurrence. TEPCO officials say the employees carried out the study as part of their training. They say the utility did not really expect such a large tsunami to hit the plant. That was 
The government is investigating possible misconduct by a panel of the Japan Atomic Energy Commission reviewing the country's future nuclear policy. It's been found the panel held many closed-door meetings with representatives of the nuclear industry. Cabinet office members held the first meeting of an investigating team. The six-member panel concluded a report on nuclear fuel recycling last month, but it was later revealed they disclosed the unreleased draft to groups promoting nuclear power. Team leader, senior Vice Minister Hitoshi Goto said a full investigation is needed to restore public trust. The team interviewed a senior official of the Japan Atomic Energy Commission about why it held the closed-door sessions. The official said the sessions were organized to gather information. He stressed that the reports did not reflect opinions of those promoting nuclear power. The investigative team plans to interview other members of the panel and to present its finding by the end of July. Officials at Japan's Education Ministry are apologizing to the nation's parents. They say radiation exposure limits set for children immediately following last year's nuclear power plant disaster were too high. A report by the ministry discusses a decision concerning radiation exposure made in April last year. Officials set a limit of no more than 20 millisieverts per year of radiation for children during outdoor school activities. At the time, the ministry said it was following the advice of the International Commission on Radiological Protection. The commission recommends limiting people's radiation exposure immediately after an emergency to between 1 and 20 millisieverts per year. An annual dosage of 1 millisievert is the benchmark in normal times. Parents in Japan objected to the Education Ministry for adopting a limit at the high end of the commission's range. Ministry officials later lowered the threshold to one millisievert per year. Japanese nuclear experts also said the ministry's initial limit was too high. First your ass is backed up, now the toilet's backed up. And if you're not going to have the right attitude about it, fuck it, I'll just shit on you. Japan's Prime Minister says it's essential to restart Central Japan's OE nuclear plant. Now the mayor of the host town looks set to give his consent. The plant in Fukui Prefecture's Oi town is offline for scheduled safety checks. The prefecture's Nuclear Safety Committee has declared the plant's number three and number four reactors safe. Oi Mayor Shinobu Tokioka is expected to tell the town assembly on Thursday that he supports switching the reactors back on. Fukui Governor Issei Nishikawa also needs to give his approval before the plant can come back online. We will listen to the opinions of the Prefectural Assembly and OE Town before we reach our decision. Governor Nishikawa will inspect the OE plant on Tuesday. He's expected to make his decision as early as Friday. Um, this video is about um, songs that get stuck in your head because I've had the Oscar Mayer Wiener song stuck in my head for like a week and it's really starting to annoy me. Nothing that I've been listening to is helping. Um, like seriously, I've been listening to all my, my chemical romance songs <laughs> since I had it stuck in my head and it's still not getting out so it's really annoying me. Um, I was just wondering, what kind of stupid songs that stuck in your guys' heads? Because, like, everything that seems to be, like, really retarded gets stuck in mine. Like, all, like, little kids' shows, like, Tell Tubbies and Blues Clues, the theme songs just get stuck in my head. And then I'm going around, like, singing the stupid Blues Clues theme song in my head for, like, weeks on end. Yeah, what kind of things that stuck in your heads? So leave a comment or a video response below. Tokyo Electric Power Company has revealed that the March 11th damaged a critical nuclear fuel likely melted down. They also have been damaged by the quake. Nuclear fuel likely melted down. They also have been damaged by the quake. Nuclear fuel likely melted down. They also have been May also have been damaged by the quake. Nuclear fuel likely melted down. May, may, may.
The Japanese government is asking businesses now to curb production and sales of incandescent light bulbs, and this would be to promote energy saving this summer. The Environment Ministry made the request to lighting industry groups on Wednesday, and they were asked to boost production of light-emitting diode bulbs instead. An LED bulb costs about 10 times more than incandescent light bulbs, but their power consumption is only an eighth of that of traditional light bulbs. The ministry estimates that electricity for as many as 1.4 million households could be saved each year. That's if all incandescent lights currently used in Japan are replaced with LEDs. Toshiba and Hitachi groups have already stopped production of incandescent light bulbs. Panasonic is considering following suit this year.